Saturday, June 25th, 2022. Today on the Daily Review, we dive again into the world of Indian cinema with a new rag, cash yap, masterpiece, I guess. Ramen Ragav 2.0. With your host, me, Professor Joe Luraka. And boy, this has got some of the big, some of the big, big boys in cinema world has got Nahwazuddin Siddiqui, one of my faves already, and then Vicky Kashil, Kashal, no, it's, it's Kashil, right? Kashil, Kashil, that's how you do it, Kashil, sorry, I'm going to put a little, I looked it up, but I got to put a little symbol over the A so I remember that, Kashil, anyway, Vicky Kashil, who's in, uh, I'm getting, getting him recommended a lot, he seems like kind of an action, good looking action guy. Anyway, this movie, <clears throat> whoa, baby, I was it was sold to me as kind of like the Joker, and a little bit, it's a little bit like the movie Joker because it's about a serial killer, kind of deranged person. But we go into the the psyche of it. It's not just like a slasher movie. Um, but in the beginning, it tells you the story of a man. You know, on the screen, it just says Ragam Ragva have was a guy who was a, a true story of a guy in. Bombay, well now Mumbai, in the 60s, and he was, uh, he confessed to killing 41 people, and he eventually died in jail. So he's a real guy, and then it, then it very specifically on the screen, which I thought was cool, said, this film is not about him. <laughs> and then it starts. And so what it is about is Nawazuddin is, uh, really the, the opening incident is we see Nawazuddin, we think it's him, we assume it's him, um, killing somebody, an older man, and then a cop shows up who's dirty, this is Vicky's character, and he's like, sees that there's all these drugs, but sees that somebody's there, so he, and then the neighbor walks in going, what the hell's going on, and so he kills the neighbor in the same way that the drug dealer kind of guy was murdered, does that make sense, so he's like, he's like combining the two murders so that it seems like it's... Uh, this other guy, because it was the same MO and the same weapon. So he, like, and that happens kind of throughout the story that he will hide things he's done wrong under the moniker of this serial killer. So, yeah, that would, that, no, it's very well done. It reminds me of, like, Seven. It reminds me a little bit of Face Off, strangely, or Man Bites Dog. I kind of got that, because sometimes they take the glorification of their violence, which I know I know why they're doing it because that's how it's being perceived in our character's head, but I think that sometimes it comes off as really, really kind of off-putting. Um, not, again, don't get, don't start attacking me. I'm not offended. I'm just like, oh, narratively, I don't think we needed that stuff with the kid. You know, like that when the kid's tied up and stuff. It feels a little... Um, I don't know. I don't know because um, not that he k kills a child, but because of like after that, it goes into like exuberant music, and it's like it's like isn't this guy so cool? But it's like that's the feeling he has. He has I'm so cool now. I'm a fucking killer. I make the I make the rules, you know. Um, but some of that came off. I made me a little bit uncomfortable, uh, just because it's like oh god. But that's probably exactly the goal of the movie. So good on you, Cash App. If that's how you say it, or. Kashi Yap. Um, and then the, 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 here's the one problem I have with the movie. Instantaneously, I was like, cop and criminal, criminal, we aren't so different, you and I. Like that kind of movie, which we've seen a bunch. That's a similar theme that like, and this does it better than most movies do it. But thematically, I was like, oh, we've, I've been here. I've been here before. I kind of know where this, what, what this is saying and where this is going. And I actually think, although this, this climax is hardcore awesome, and very rarely do those movies bring it so much to the forefront in the climax that it, it synthesizes into one event. You know, that's really smart. Also, this is the first Indian cinema film, and I'm not that well first in it, but this is the first one that had a sex scene with a boob in it. I saw a boob, and I yelled out loud. I went, that's a boob! Because <laughs> I was just surprised to see it. I just didn't think that that was a thing they did very much. We don't do it very much in America, too, in terms of... Well, you're obviously doing it a bunch in India. You got fucking three billion people. I meant in films. Anyway, um, 
So yeah, it, it's a it's a story that is a little bit um, intelligently disjoint, you know, a little bit told out of order. It's broken down into chapters, though, so you can kind of keep it all together. Um, and, and and as we go through the chapters, we kind of learn more of Raman's backstory, and he kind of becomes more prolific and starts out extremely poor, but after he murders a few people, he gets like you know a bit a bit of money and a bit of things he can sell to kind of slowly have a bit more um, than just scrabbling around in the streets. Um, what else? Yeah, uh, the cop. Yeah, then so uh, Kashal's character. Eh, I think that that uh, it's played right. It is played right, but uh, that storyline I don't find as interesting, but it is great. So, you know, just as a whole, it's a little bit repetitive and a little bit tedious once the message is made clear. Once you're like, oh, yeah, I, I get it. They're basically, this isn't like a spoil. They're not literally the same person. But it's like, yes, to what's the difference between somebody who kills somebody because they want to and somebody who kills somebody because, like, they, they're a cop and they think that they have the power, like, to, 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 to do that without, with, without prejudice, you know, just without uh, judgment, just like, <laughs> not that I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying. Anyway. Um, yeah, so then ultimately, I think the message is a bit immature. You know, that, that the ideas behind it is a little bit like senior in high school, like the criminal's the cop, the cop is the criminal kind of thing. But like I said, they bring it to one of the better climaxes in terms of that type of story to really kind of force the characters to make a decision. And I was really surprised at the decision that they made. And it, it's really negative. And I think that makes sense for the movie, but it really left kind of a bad taste in my mouth. But yeah, I mean, I I get it. I like this movie. I'm sure a lot of people think this movie is cool for all the wrong reasons. Like the people who think Joker is cool because it's like chaotic and he's misanthropic and he's like down with society kind of a guy. And a lot of people feel that way. But that movie is about a crazy, crazy, like somebody who's who doesn't have a support system and all this stuff happens to him. It's not just... It's not just incels who daddies pay for their apartments and they get mad about because, you know, because nobody likes them because they don't have talents and they don't have a good personality and they look stupid because all they do is sit around and fucking get takeout. What am I talking? What am I rallying against? I think I'm rallying against myself, except because of my heart condition. I don't seem to put on weight. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, all right, I have to grade it. I think this is going to be a little bit controversial. But despite the performance, you know, Wazadeen is now officially one of the best actors I've seen in my life. The diversity of roles between this, The Lunchbox, and Gangs of Wazapur, it's like three completely different performances. Like, completely like different universes of performances. Unbelievable. And that really, really lifts this movie up. I, I mean, it's really a high B. It's probably a B plus. I probably should have given it a B plus. Let's give it a B plus. I changed my mind. I'm going to give it a B plus. I keep remembering that ending. That's a good ending. B plus. Changed. On, on the fly, it changed. But it isn't higher than that. It is not in the A minus zone. I think there was one more thing I wanted to say, and that's what made me... Oh, this is why I ended up giving it the B plus here. They do a really good job of... Like, letting a scene play out, that's something we suck at in mainstream American movies. Or mainstream movies, period, I'm learning. Just anywhere in the world where they're just like, yeah, 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 yeah. They're just, like, trying to get through the scene to get to the next scene. It happens so much in Star Wars movies now. It's like, we got to go to this planet and this planet. It's like, let's just sit down on a planet, you know? And so it really reminded me of Quentin Tarantino. This had some Quentin Tarantino vibes in terms of that idea of him being like, no, we're in this scene. So there's a scene where he goes to his sister's house and... We learn some backstory that makes him an even more horrible person. We're like, Jesus, about you know how he interacted with his sister uh, as a child. And she's so terrified that you know that something's wrong. Her performance is amazing. I, oh, I wrote it down. What was her name? Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I wrote down actress, and then I wrote a line to look up the name, and I never did. <laughs> well, she's amazing. She looks terrified, like, instantly. 
and that whole sequence, like a lesser movie would have just had it be like, and he murders them or something. This is like a long drawn out scene where they go, he goes grocery shopping and they get food and he starts making all this food and stuff. It's, it's good. It's intense. It's got a little drop of the Hitchcock, you know, but then with the boom, to boom, to boom, to boom, to boom, on top of it, you know, <clears throat> hope those sound effects helped you understand what I'm trying to say. Anyway, you can like, and subscribe. I'm here every day. You can be here as much as you want. That's right. I will keep going deep, deep into the world of Indian cinema. Although this one, I think this one's like floating on top. But uh, we're going to go deeper. We're going to go deeper. What am I talking about? This guy's crazy. Anyway, see you tomorrow.